الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه المعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين uh, Thank you very much for inviting me today and uh, it's a great privilege for myself to be here to present uh, the Islamic perspective of the Sunnah uh, from Ahlul Sunnah I have already heard about this um, gathering. I unfortunately couldn't make for it. Uh, this is a very great work. First of all, I would, I would like to appreciate the work is being done here in this institution. And there is an actual need of this work nowadays, especially when Muslim Ummah are facing so many challenges. Uh, coming right to my uh, topic, first of all, what is Sunnah? The definition of Sunnah. When we talk about the definition, there are two ways of um, defining something. One is the different meaning, and the other is the metaphorical meaning. The Sunnah, literal meaning is, it's, it is Arabic word, and the literal meaning is the apparent road or practice. So these are the dif different literal meaning of word Sunnah. Metaphorical mean, meaning in hadith, terminology it denotes as follow. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Haq Dehlwi has said in his book, and uh, which is very clear and very brief. He ma sadr an al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam min qawlin aw filin aw taqrib. Min qawlin, whatever he has said from his tongue. He alayhi salatu waslam, or fi'lin, or he has acted in his life, or taqreerin, which means that something has been performed in front of Nabi alayhi salatu waslam, and he stayed quiet, he accepted, or he did not refuse, or did not stop. So all the kinds are also part of that sunnah. Now, if you go a bit further to this definition, قول, for example, simply we can take an example. The إنما الأعمال بالنيات أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. This is the hadith from Nabi عليه الصلاة والسلام that he has said. This is a قول from him. And the second is the fear. Fear he has prayed. <clears throat> this is a sunnah that he has prayed himself, and uh, he the, and he said that. You pray as you see me praying. So that is the practical way of Sunnah, practical Sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu islam. The third branch is the, the something has may have happened in front of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he stayed quiet on that. So here is the great example we can take at the time of Ghazwa uh, bani Quraida. As everybody, all the scholars know about that, that Nabi alayhi salatu islam commanded his companions that you go and pray at certain place. But then on the way, there were two groups. One prayed there, the other group, they just reached there because Nabi alayhi salatu islam said that go there and then pray. And then when they reached and got together in front of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and then there, the matter has been presented to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He heard and he stayed both are okay or, st or stayed quiet. So that was the something had been happened and then he stayed quiet. That is the example of Tatrir. Similarly, if you go further to this uh, definition of Sunnah, then Imam Kasani rahimahullah has said that the, the meaning in Sunnah is the continuity and consistency that should be there. And looking at this particular issue, which may also fall in one of the following uh, slides, the Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he says that Ta'amun Ahlul Madinah, that is also Sunnah and Hujjah according to him. That the, 
people are doing certain things they have received from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and then they are doing and then the tabi'in and then the tabi'in and so on so many people so when Nabi alayhi salatu salam stayed and practiced his deen and then he says that ta'amul ahlul madina is also hujja and sunnah similarly Imam Khitabi rahimahullah he says that sunnah it can be both ways praised and uh, positive way and negative way from positive he says that he also presented the example for, for, from Quran he says that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, man qad arsalna qabla it's uh, about the prophets it's, it's a positive way sunnah and also uh, negative way la yu'minuna bihi wa qad khalat sunnatul awwali so this is negative way he says that it can be positive it can be negative then further rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he also for example uh, to strengthen this viewpoint particularly uh, rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said man sanna sunnatan hasana falahu ajraha wa ajra man amila biha ila yawm al qiyamah wa man sunna wa man sanna sunnatan sayyi'a kana alayhi wizraha wa wizra man amila biha ila yawm al qiyamah so that is also that both ways this word has been used. Now further to this, what is the legal position of Sunnah in Ahlus Sunnah? How do they look at it, and uh, how do they find? Now legal position, if we uh, find from the Quran, it clearly says in Surah An Nahl, "Wa anzalna ilayka dhikra li tubayyan li nas ma nuzila ilayhi wa la alahu yatafakkaron." The O Rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, the reminder and the advice, the Quran, that you may explain clearly to men what is sent down to them, and that they may give thought to that. That is the role of Nabi alayhi salatu wasallam to receive the revelation. The which he did and to explain and put into practice by himself because according to one of the narration that he was walking Quran so put into practice for himself and to his companions as well and then this verse clearly denotes the, the legal position of Rasulullah and also the authenticity of a sunnah that this is the second source after the Quran that should be followed and take as a legal position. So that role has been assigned by Allah according to this verse, this verse to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is also clearly a, um, an answer, an answer to those who refuse the sunnah and uh, uh, the role of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Further, how this Sunnah and how, uh, how uh, all these uh, Hadith and its branches has been collected and uh, gathered, there are two uh, important sources to receive the Sunnah. Number one, from Ahlul Bayt, and uh, we will go a uh, little bit further, the, who are the Ahlul Bayt and how they have been collected, how they have contributed to their, that. The second is the Sahaba Radwanullahi Ta'ala alayhi majma'in. So these two are the main sources to collect the Sunnah, uh, including Hadith, practice, what we, what, what we have already said about that. Then there are two also, we find um, in this collection two types of Ruwat, the narrators. Number one, well-known personalities from Ahlul Bayt. For example, Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala is a son of Sayyidina Abdullah. And uh, also in Ahlul Sunnah, all the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, they belong to the, to the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So this is why we almost find from every wife of Nabi alayhi salatu salam, some of the narration or some more or less, but those are there. Also, a good amount of the 
narrations and a hadith and a sunnah we find from Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, who was one of the great companions uh, along with the others. So a good number, a good amount of a hadith has been also narrated by Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. Similarly, uh, Sayyidina Hassan, Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an, and many others uh, who belong to that family. Amongst the Sahaba, there is a large number. There is a large, num large number. For example, pro proportionate wise, from Ahlul Bayt, a good number from Ahlul Bayt, there is a good amount of narrations in Sunni books we find. And again, proportionate wise, uh, a large number from the Sahaba we find a hadith from them as well. Now, the history of collection uh, to preserve the Sira and Hadith. What is the history? The collection at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Ahmed Ghazi, who is one of the great scholars, has passed away uh, recently uh, of our time. He says in his book, Muhadrat uh, Hadith, he says that the number of uh, different small or large collection at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam from different companions including uh, Sayyidina uh, Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-As, Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Saad ibn Ubada, these are the main. He says the number reaches to about 48 at that time. So it means that in a good measured way, it has been collected at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. However, uh, a question also sometimes arises from different people and asked from different people who really uh, deny the hadith. They say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam had in fact stopped. But that was at the very initial stage of the revelation of the Quran. So that do not mix two things. One sunnah and the second is the Qur'an. Of course, the Qur'an, the word of Allah, has priority over the sunnah. So, let not to mix two things up. But when it was quite certain, then according to the um, further narrations, he, alayhi salatu salam, said, Uktubu minni. You can write down. And also giving permission to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-As. He, he permitted him himself. So we find further narrations after that. So at, the, at, the, at that time, the collection had been made. And similarly, uh, efforts of Nabi alayhi salatu salam, that he alayhi salatu salam had been assigned this role to teach and train his companions. And in fact, at that time, um, many other people, they may not have, have written these. But however, the more culture was to put into practice, that was, that was quite dominant to put everything into practice. And this is why we find from, the, uh, from, from amongst these Sahaba different narrations, as well as different practices, that somebody completed one certain surah in certain years. That was because they were putting into practice not just memorizing or writing down or compiling the things. So that was the uh, efforts and uh, hard work that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was doing himself. Then again, efforts of Sahaba, Radwanullahi ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi to learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They, they were quite stick with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam day and night, spending time to learn and to, to memorize, to put into practice. So they were doing all that. Then, of course, that was the time of Sahaba, as I, I have earlier said. The 48, small or large, compilation we find from different Sahaba, uh, Then further, at the time of Tabi'een, uh, a great work had been done at the time of Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He played a huge role. And when it might not be seen very important to write down at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, when he was there and people were listening and receiving and putting into practice.
but it was quite important after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, and to to put into the books and compile it for the further generation and the nations. So at that time, said Umar ibn uh, uh, Umar ibn uh, Abdul Aziz, he played a huge role. He then wrote when he uh, he had been uh, a caliph. Then he wrote to different people to collect the hadith <coughs> and the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, and he requested send send them to me. That was a major time when great scholars they really contributed to that area, and we find at that time uh, Al-Zuhri, Sayyid ibn al-Busayyib, and similarly Al-Shahbi, Al-Hasan al-Basri, uh, Hammam ibn Mamba. Munabba and Imam Baqir and so on. There are so many others from Ahlul Bayt as well as uh, from amongst the Sahaba. Uh, now, introduction to literature. In the literature, of course, it covers many things. Lit literature itself means really everything. But when we find the uh, literature in the history, it comes with the Sira and history, and there are quite big names at that time they have really worked on. And uh, that was Ibn Qutayba, also Ibn Sa'd, and Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Hisham, al Baladri, and al Tabri, etc. There are, there are many others as well. So they have written huge books to compile the Sira and the history. Some, you can, you can further uh, classify onto only history or only Sira, some people have done uh, some work only, but this is quite a good mix of history and Sira. Then Tawatur, uh, this is another uh, part of the literature, of Islamic literature, an established collective practice. That is what Imam Malik rahimahullah says that this is the hujja for me. Because he lived in Medina and he, he had seen the people of Medina. And he was amongst Tabin as well. So he, so he says that that is hujja for me because the, the, those people who have received the, the practice of this deen, the collective practice of this deen from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, uh, and in fact the continuity and the consi consistency of, the, of one particular action, that makes hujja. So he says that tawatur is also according to him. Of course, Tawatr is also part of the uh, literature. Also, Hadith. Uh, hadith. Uh, there, are, there are quite a large number of uh, books in this area. And then Athar, the practice and the speech of Sahaba and Ahlul Bayt. So, there is, there is another part of literature. Now, uh, here you can see the list of the, uh, the muhaddithun and the books, um, almost these are 10 or 11, but there are some others as well, but these are the main and major ones. Right, okay, um, now we come to the conclusion, and uh, each uh, second source, sunnah is the second source of our reception of the Holy Quran. This is quite clearly clear crystal in, in Ahlu Sunnah. This is the second source of reception. <coughs> and uh, also reception from Ahlul Bayt and Sahaba. So there is no as such allegation, um, as I have earlier on said, that there is a very good amount of hadith and the narrators of, from both sides, from Ahlul Bayt as well as from the uh, Sahaba. Thirdly, it includes Qawr, Fa'l, and Taqreer, Taqreer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, it's impossible to understand the Qur'an without Sunnah. So this is clearly the verse we have previously recited and, and, and uh, seen. But this is the clearly answer to those who refuse the Sunnah and the role of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Uh, finally, it has been collected when structured and well measured way, as I have just said, that at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, it was uh, about 48, 
and uh, at the time of Tabi'in, it was about 250 compilations with the different Tabi'in. That has also been mentioned by Dr. Mahmoud Ahmed Ghazi, that he says that at the time of Tabi'in, uh, good compilation was about 250 at the time of Tabi'in. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to understand the Sunnah very well and act accordingly. Thank you very much.